Welcome back to our um, series of notes on importing um, data into ServiceNow. Um, I hope you're following along through this series. If you're not, it might be helpful to go back to um, the beginning so you can kind of follow where we are. I'll provide links. Uh, naturally, they're on the website, but I'll provide them in the videos here too so you can get to the beginning of this process. But uh, if you have been following along at this point, in our series of notes, we have um, talked about creating a data source, and we've actually created our data source, which tells ServiceNow about our source data entity, um, what type it is, how to connect to it. It also describes what data we would like to import or pull from that source data entity. And then um, further, it instructs ServiceNow what we'd like to name and label the staging table, um, that intermediate intermediary table that holds the data before it gets actually processed and imported into the target. Uh, we further in the next note, we tested our data source. We saw that our connection worked. We saw that um, ServiceNow was able to create the staging table the way we had um, uh, set it up uh, with the name and label that we preferred. And then uh, we actually looked and saw in the staging table that data had been imported. And we talked a little bit about understanding how import sets work. This note covers the next step in the process, which includes um, instructing ServiceNow how we want to now move that data that we've imported into the staging table and how we would like to get it loaded into our final destination, our target table in ServiceNow. The way you do that is a couple of additional records we need to create in ServiceNow, and those are the transform map record and transform and sorry transform map record and field map records so um we'll we'll cover that now and let's start with a couple of definitions first um field maps um the way that we tell service now uh, how we want the data moved from the staging table into the target table its final destination is a field at a time so on a field by field basis we're going to say we want to move field a from um, or field one from the staging table, and we want to map it to field one or whatever on the target table. And field two in the staging table is going to map over to field three in the target table and, and so forth. So we're really just connecting fields from the staging table to where we want them to reside in the target table. Each time we make a mapping like that on a, at a field level, uh, that actually gets stored in ServiceNow as a field map record. So you're going to have a record in a table for every individual field mapping um, that we build. The name of that table in ServiceNow is field map, and the, uh, that's the label of the table is field map. The actual name of the table is sys underscore transform underscore entry. And as you all know, I like to look at things on a table basis uh, rather than, than use the, um, the menu. You can use the, the application navigator to get to a lot of these things, and I'll explain or I'll kind of mention how. But um, I like to see what's happening kind of behind the scenes, so I work uh, kind of at a database level because it, uh, it just makes what's going on in the system a little easier for me to understand. So I'm going to go to that table that stores field map records, and that as I mentioned, is called um, field map. The actual name of the table, though, is sys underscore transform entry. That's the name of the table. The, the, field, the label of the table is field map. So I'm going to do a dot list there to see the records that are in that table. So you can see here, ServiceNow has pulled up the field maps table, and it, it has no records to display. I've not done any field mapping yet. So there's the table. It's ready to go. We just need to build the field maps to tell ServiceNow how we want this data to move. Um, second definition is transform map. And um, what you can think of, or the, way, the, the easiest way for me to, to think of a transform map is really just a grouping mechanism for field maps. So we've talked about how field maps are field to field mappings. We need to group those together into some um, unit that represents kind of uh, our import as a whole. And the way we do that is with a transform map. Again, that's another record stored in ServiceNow. The name of the table that that, that transform maps are stored in is labels trans, table transform map. 
and the actual name is sys underscore transform underscore map. So I'm going to show you that table as well. Sys underscore transform underscore map dot list. And again, we're going to see we have no records because we haven't created one yet. But you can see we're looking at the table transform maps table. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's move on. The next thing I want to mention uh, just before we actually do the demonstration is the target table that we're using um, in this demonstration here. The target uh, of an import into ServiceNow can be or could be an out-of-the-box ServiceNow table like the user table, for example, or maybe some CMDB table that you're wanting to import data into. Um, it could also be a table that you have actually gone in and created in ServiceNow specifically for your purposes. And that is what I've done for this uh, demonstration. So I went ahead and I will actually link to another note that I'll create to kind of show how to create a custom table in ServiceNow. Uh, for, the, for the purposes of this demonstration, though, I've gone ahead and done that. I created a table called My Table. That was the label of it. The actual name of the table in the data, database is U underscore my underscore table. So show you that table real quick. U underscore my underscore table dot list. Again, it will have nothing in it. But you can see here the table is ready to go. I'm going to actually show you the structure of the table, the fields, uh, the columns that we have. And again, you can do that by clicking on any column heading hamburger menu and going to configure table. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to show you just a couple of things here. When you create a table in ServiceNow, a uh, custom table in ServiceNow, it creates several fields on its own that it requires that every table has. Um, and then you have the ability to add the columns that you want for your specific needs. So. You can see the difference here by, by the red X. The red X indicates custom fields that I've created. All these other fields like created, created by, sys ID, updated, updated by. Those are all fields that ServiceNow creates on its own um, <clears throat> to track uh, what's happening with the table. So you can see, and if you remember from our, our, our previous notes, um, we had data that we're importing that included five columns, a name, an address, a city, state, and a zip. I've created fields in this custom table for that here. I've created a field named username. There's one named address, city, state, and then I created one named zip code. So this is going to be our target table or the landing spot where we want our imported data to reside. Could have been a custom, could have been an out of the box table, could have been a CMDB table, doesn't matter. I just for simplicity wanted to create a table um, of our own that's kind of had fields that matched what we were importing. Okay, with that said, let's return to building our um, transform map and our field maps. Um, we could go and we could create individual field map records on our own. And uh, then we could create a, a transform map, which is the grouping mechanism, and then we could relate those two. That would be one way to do it. ServiceNow makes it a little simpler if you actually start with the transform map and then in that process of creating the transform map, it provides us the ability to go ahead and add the field maps that we want related to that transform map. That's the way I'm going to do it in this demonstration. So we'll start out with a transform map. So again, I'm going to go to the transform, the table that stores transform maps, sys underscore transform underscore map dot list. We were here just previously. We saw that we had no records. so. We're going to create a new record, a new transform map record. <clears throat> Click new there. Uh, give your transform map a name. This can be anything. It can be um, it, just whatever you want uh, to refer to the transform map as. I'm just going to name it test transform map. Next thing, we need to tell it what the source table is because, as I mentioned, uh, it's going to be about uh, mapping data from a source to a target. In this case, the source is not really our initial source. It's the staging table that this data, that the data got imported into. So this is the second half of um, the intermediary, intermediary part where the staging table is in the middle. So our source table in this case is going to be our staging table. And if you remember from our previous note, we named that test import u test import so i'm going to select that as our staging table 
our source table in this case. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over here to the other required field, which is the target field. Now service now saying, okay, where do you want this data moved or mapped to? And that is going to be the custom table that I created, which is going to be our final destination. So I'm going to drop that down here and I named that table my table. You can just type here my and get a nice filter. There's my table, my table, you underscore my table. So that's the table that we're going to be mapping the data to, the final destination. Several other options here. I'm not going to go over all of these. Naturally, we want this to be active. I'm not going to talk about business rules in this note. You can read about it. We can talk about it later. Run script, I will talk about it in a, in a different note. But uh, <clears throat> with those items marked, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going, you could submit this, which would then take you back to your, um, your list of uh, transform maps. Another option, if you want to stay on the page and actually save the record, is just go to the hamburger menu for the record uh, and just click save. And you're going to see what happens here. After I click save, the record has now been created. We now have our first uh, transform map record. And uh, the page is refreshed and given me some additional tools now. As I mentioned, the second step here, it's given me some handy tools in the related links area to go ahead and set up now my field maps. So I've got the grouping mechanism. Now I need to tell it the individual field mappings that I want uh, for this transform map. So a couple of ways, three ways to do it actually. Auto map matching fields. If you had your fields named the same um, and ServiceNow would be able to uh, make the mapping automatically, you could try that. Uh, another way would be to come down here in the actual uh, list of the, the field maps and you could just individually create new field maps um, and do it that way. The, uh, the method I'm going to use in this demonstration is the map assist, mapping assist. So I'm going to click on mapping assist and it's a nice little tool that ServiceNow provides. Um, we told it what the target table or what the source table was. That's our staging table in this, in this um, scenario. We told it what the target table is. That's my custom table. On the, so it's got the source table fields listed here. It's got the target table fields listed here, the target ta table fields that are loadable. Um, and in between, we're going to make this mapping to mapping relationship. So I'm going to start with name. I'm sorry, yeah, name. So we're going to start with name. I'm going to go ahead and add the name in the staging table is going to map to my username field in my whoops target table so we've just created one field map record well when we click save we've just set up one field map record we'll then go to address staging table address goes to um, uh, target table address service now could have figured that one out i'm sure um, city staging table city goes to target table city, staging table state, goes to target table state, and staging table zip goes to my target table zip code field. So we'll say zip code, add that, and we've now set up what will be one, two, three, four, five field maps for the five fields that we had imported initially uh, from our source data. With that complete, I'm going to click Save. It's going to return me now to my transform map form. But now you can see if we scroll to the bottom and we look at our field map list, we've got file five field maps set. Um, and it shows you the source field and the target field that it's mapped to. Okay. Very good. Making good progress. The other thing I want to mention here is this coalesce uh, value here. Um, uh, coalesce, that's a word that uh, I've used, I've used before because I've done some database work. It's not a, it's not a term that everybody understands. Um, I actually looked it up in the dictionary um, because I wanted to uh, make sense of it for all of you. Um, coalesce in the dictionary means come together to form one mass or a whole. And the example is the puddles had coalesced into shallow streams. Interesting, huh? Coalesce, really what it means to me is match. Use this field uh, for matching. So if you remember um, in our last note, 
we actually imported the same set of rows twice. Uh, we had 10 rows and, and we had five, a copy of five rows twice. They were exactly the same. Well, when we actually look, if, if we had a scenario like that where our data had, um, uh, or maybe we run, run the import a second time, we need to tell ServiceNow what it can use to identify a match so that it doesn't insert duplicate rows uh, when we do the import. So essentially what this is saying, if you think from database terms, is, is there some primary key or some field that I can look at and do a comparison with what we already have in the, the, the target table so that I don't insert duplicates? Um, that's what coalesce means. This is not a great example because there is no unique key that I created on our source table. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that um, we're gonna use the name as the coalesce field. As I said, this is not a good example because it's quite possible that you may have two records or two people with the same name uh, at the same location um, in, this, uh, in this data. So this isn't a great example, I'm just using name. I know that in my data, I only have five records and there are no names that are repeated, so I can use name as my coalesce. Um, but uh, again, not, not a great way to do it. It would have been much better if my source data had some primary key or unique ID or something that I could use to say this is what makes this thing unique uh, and that uh, you can use that to coalesce on. <clears throat> so in order to set that value, I, I, there are a couple ways to do it. I'm just gonna show you the standard way. I can go into the um, field map record by clicking on the, the uname um, entry. And, and then it shows my field map. Here's my source table. Here's my target table. Um, here's my source field. Here's my target field. And I can just click this coalesce option here. I'm not going to mention these two, coalesce on empty fields, coalesce case sensitive. I'm not worried about, you know, uppercase, lowercase, such. So just click update there. And we will now have a field um, <clears throat> that uh, that ServiceNow can use uh, to do matching on. It's making a point here that, hey, when I do matching, this can get expensive on the database. Um, you might want to make a primary key, or I'm sorry, you might want to create an index on on the fields that you're using to match with. So we don't, we don't need to worry about that in our scenario. So you can see now that we have a coalesce field set here to, um, to true. So now let's just real quickly um, Let's take a look at our tables again to see that uh, that everything that we've done here um, has actually ended in um, records in a table someplace, which is always almost always the case in service. Now let's start with our field maps. As I mentioned before, sys transform entry, sys dot list. That's the the table that stores field maps, and you can see we have five field maps created. Very good. And then let's check. I don't have the field here showing that uh, that actually relates these to the uh, the transform map, but I'll show you that if we go to the transform map table, sys transform map. Remember, this is the grouping mechanism for the field maps. Oops, didn't get my T. We should have one record here, and there it is. So again, if I wanted to, from the transform map record, I could go into it, and you're going to see all it does is take me right into that same form where I was looking, um, and it's got our five field maps that are associated to it. So at this point in uh, the process of building our import, we have created our data source. Um, we have tested the data source in the creation of the staging table. We saw that there's data in the staging table. Um, we've created the transform map and we've created the field maps. Um, so very good. The next step in this process really is to simply test our import from the beginning to the end. Uh, make sure that uh, the data is moving from our very beginning source through the staging table into our target the way that we would expect. And then the final thing we'll talk about is um, the ability to schedule a transform. So that, or I'm sorry, schedule an import so that you could run these recurring if, if you had a need for that. So. Talk about those things in the next note. I hope you guys join. Um, we'll see you there.